Greetings, everybody. I think we're actually on time today. Hello from Spinster Books. Miss Charlie gives a yawn. I'm sure that means hello in dog German. Anyway, uh, welcome to the 10-minute story hour. Uh, Charlie's going to show you her rear end and then go to sleep. Anyway, today's book is Dusty Locks and the Three Bears. This is a very exciting book. Get ready for some uh, grand emoting here. I hope I can hold my voice through the whole book. It's a very exciting one. Once upon a time, way out west, there were three grizzly bears who lived together in a neat and tidy cabin in the woods. One was a little itty-bitty bear cub, just knee-high to a bumblebee. One was a mild-mannered, middle-sized mama, and one was a great big humpback, gray-haired and grizzly, nine feet tall, and cross as two sticks. Oh, my. Indeed. They each had a dish to eat their beans from, a little saucer for little bear cub, a tin plate for the mama bear, and a great big turkey platter for the great big grizzly bear. And they each had a seat to sit on, a little three-legged stool for the little bear cub, a rocking chair for the mama bear, and a great big lumpy stump for the great big grizzly bear. Mm-hmm. And they each had a bed to sleep in, a little straw mattress for the bear cub, a feather bed for the mama bear, and a great big heap of prickly green branches for the great big grizzly bear. One day, while their red hot beans were cooling in their three dishes, the bears went out for a walk. Just as soon as they turned their grizzly backs, Something strange came blowing out of the woods. Charlie's very excited. A cloud of smoke? A swarm of mosquitoes? No siree, it was a dirty little girl. She hadn't had a bath for a month of Sunday, so everybody called her Dusty Locks. But Trouble was her middle name. That little outlaw had run away from home without stopping to kiss her mother goodbye. Oh, here she's running. Guess where she's going. Charlie is a horrible audience. First, Dusty Locks peeked in the bear's windows. Then she squinted through the keyhole of the cabin door. Finally, she barged straight inside. Oh, those grizzlies were fine, upstanding, liabodden critters, liabodden, law-abiding critters, honest as the day is long, and they never locked their door. Beans, cried Dusty Locks. Yahoo, I'm so hungry I could eat a saddle blanket. Now, if the bears had been there, they would have shown true western hospitality and said, sit right down and dig in. But crusty little Dusty Locks didn't wait to be asked. Mm-mm. And she is just helping herself. Ooh, nice picture window. Wow. Charlie. She took a bite of the big grizzly's beans. Mm-hmm. At first, Dusty Lock smacked her lips, but then she let out a, oh, way. A wildfire flamed inside her mouth. She howled louder than 10,000 coyotes, and Dusty Locks said a very bad word. You see, the great big grizzly bear liked his beans chock full of chili peppers. Too hot, gasped Dusty Locks. When the fire died down, Dusty Locks took a bite of the mama bear's beans. But the mama liked hers plain. No salt, no nothing. <laughs> Dusty Locks spat them out. She had no more manners than a pig in a peach orchard. Then she took a big bite of bear cub's beans. Oh, just right, said Dusty Locks as she gobbled them all up, licked the saucer clean, and burped. Oh, she's 
sitting on the table too. Mmm. Somebody mama gonna be upset. My mama would be upset. Next, Dusty Lock sat on a great big grizzly stump. I'm rough and tough, she bragged. But even too lumpy and bumpy for her. Then she tried the rocking chair. It had too many fancy dancy cushions for her. So she plunked herself down upon the bear cub's three-legged stool. <gasps> Just right, said Dusty Locks. But that heavy little roughneck set the poor stool right down into the ground. This made her madder than a half squash hornet. She kicked the pieces out of her way and stomped upstairs. Oh, man. Somebody's asking for it. Ooh. Grumpy little face. I'm going to introduce her to Grumpy Bird. Another good book we'll get to. Run away is hard work, said Dusty Locks all tuckered out. First she threw herself down on the heap of green branches that belonged to the great big grizzly. But the branches itched and they pricked and they jabbed and they stabbed Dusty Locks something terrible. So she jumped up and down and she stamped them into sprigs. Next, she flopped down onto Mama Bear's fine feather bed. Ah, oh, said Dusty Locks, mighty fine. But then she sank down deeper and deeper and deeper. And oh, cried Dusty Locks, too soft. Get me out of here. Hmm. Then she tested the bear cub's little straw mattress, and it was neither too hard nor too soft. Just right, said Dusty Locks, and she covered herself up and fell fast asleep. Hmm. Now we gotta wash the sheets. Some dirty little girl been in them. Meanwhile, the grizzlies came home from their hike. At first, they figured their tidy cabin had been struck by a sandstorm. But when the great big grizzly took a look at his dinner, he got riled. Somebody's been eating my beans, he growled in his great big rough gruff voice. Oh, somebody's been eating my beans, said the mama bear in her mild-mannered middle-sized voice. Oh, somebody's been eating my beans, too, and he's eating them all up, squeaked the bear cub in his little bitty baby voice. Mm -mm. Now, Dusty Locks had tipped over the stump. Someone's been sitting in my chair, growled the big bear in his great big grouchy voice. And Dusty Locks had dumped the cushions on the floor. And someone's been sitting in my chair, said the mama bear in her middle-sized voice. And someone's been sitting in my chair and smashed it all to flinders, squeaked the bear cub in a little bit bigger voice than before. Oh. Great big grizzly got really riled. Bean rustler, he roared, chair buster. And then the three bears galloped upstairs looking for trouble. The first thing they found was a heap of stomp sprigs. Someone's been lying in my bed, growled the big bear in his great big gruesome voice. Oh, man. Oh, he's upset. Charlie don't care. Then they saw feathers scattered from here to the breakfast. Someone's been lying in my bed, said the mama bear in her middle voice. And then they saw the little straw mattress with a rumpled blanket and a dusty, dirty head upon the pillow. Someone's been laying in my bed, and here she is, squeaked the bear club in the biggest voice he had. Well, I'll be bum-fuzzled, growled the great big bear, scratching his grizzly gray head in amazement. Land sake, said the mama bear. Smells mighty whiffy in here. Pee-you, squeaked the bear club. Is it a skunk? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Definitely washing them sheets. Mm -hmm. When Dusty Locks heard the big grizzly's voice in her sleeve, she dreamed of thunder and lightning. 
And when she heard the mama bear's voice, she dreamed of her own mother. But when she heard the bear cub squeak, she dreamed she had a bug in her ear and she woke right up. And when she saw the three grizzly bears staring at her, oh, Dusty Locks was so scared that she tumbled out of the bed, took a fly and leaped through the open window and made tracks for home. She vamoosed so fast the dust didn't settle for a week. Oh, I would think so. Ooh, she skedaddled. Look at her. Ooh, she skedaddled. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. The moment Dusty Locke's mother got a hold of that dirty little desperado, she dunked her in the bathtub. And then she scolded, and she scrubbed, and she rubbed, and she hugged, and she kissed Dusty Locks into a whole new girl entirely. And the three grizzly bears never saw her again. Or, if they did, they'd never recognized her. Oh. Awesome! So a little scrubbing and a little loving and a little forgiving on both sides makes everything all right. And Charlie still doesn't care. If anybody would like to take Charlie's place during these readings, you let me know. Because apparently Charlie only cares when somebody says Charlie's name. Sit. Good girl. Anyway, we're down here today from 12 to 2. If you want to do some pickups, uh, give us a call. Uh, I don't know. We're just hanging out. It's a beautiful day. Uh, there's tons of traffic on the road from all the people up here for the weekend. Wear your mask. Stay safe. And... Uh, we're hoping this whole thing will be over soon because we're getting bored and lonely and we miss our people. Y'all have a great day. Come and see us sometime. We'll give you a book. We'll have a little chit-chat. We miss you. Take care. Bye-bye.